what I'm going to show you now is um, how to assess a leg length discrepancy. So we would look at um, a leg length discrepancy when we see or note any asymmetry. The asymmetry can be seen from the shoulders, head tilt, all the way through to the bottom. So if there is any asymmetry, even in pathology, then you must consider a leg length discrepancy to be an underlying cause. So how we start this is by lowering the couch and laying the patient flat. So if you can sit up for me, and let's pop this down. And if you lie flat, what we're going to do is loosen off all the muscles and the structures around the hip. And there are two ways in which we can do that. We can hold on to the legs, pull down, push up, and then eventually push all the way up to measure and see if the malleoli are level. That's one way. The other way is to ask your patient to bend their knees, bring their ankles back to their bottom as far as they can, raise their bottom and move side to side. And that will loosen it off. Yep, they can then go back down and then extend their legs forward once again. So there's one of two ways that you can assess this. You can place your thumbs on the malleoli. Yep. What I like to do is place them just under because it gives you a view of the malleoli and thereby you can assess exactly uh, what the difference is by sight. And you're just approximating at this point and we're looking at around five to six millimetres. So we can see that there is a slight discrepancy. What you can do is you can then bend the knee, bring the ankles together so they are level. And this is known to be the skyline test. Um, or also the Galzini test, um, as the orthopaedic surgeons would describe it. So you place the malleoli together, bring the knees level, and what you're looking at is the height of the knees and also anteriorly if one protrudes more than the other. So you have to be at the level of the knee yeah, and look sideways. And what I can see here is that this knee here is protruding just slightly further forward. Okay. So from that, we can see that it's just about, again, five, six mil more anterior. That would indicate that the difference in the leg length is likely to come from the femur. If it was the tibia, then you would find a difference in height. All right, what we also need to check at this point is the anterior superior iliac spine. All right, so what we need to do is to palpate the anterior superior iliac spine and make sure that that is level even in chair. If there is a discrepancy there, we're then going to have... Um, the opposite effect on the leg. So we want to make sure that the, the hips are level in chair. If they're not, then we need to rule out any other spinal causes that could be altering the hip or a pelvic tilt uh, or a structural abnormality in the, the, the sacroiliac joint. So we need to take all that into consideration. So we've covered structural leg length discrepancy. What we now need to do is to check to see if there's any functional element and also to check to see what that difference is. So are you okay to stand up for me? So what we do at this point is we look to see if there's anything obvious with the foot posture. So if there was a significant difference, and when I say significant in an adult, we're looking over two centimeters, you would see that the longer side would show a more pronated foot and the shorter side would show a more supinated foot. So that's how it would look. So what we do is we get the patient to stand. And what I do is look for the iliac crest. It's right on the belt. Normally, you would have to ask your patient to remove the belt, but we can just find it above here. So I check the crest, go to the top and see if there's a discrepancy there. And the other way to do it is to look at the anterior superior iliac spine. We check that. And the other thing you must do, if I can trouble you to turn around, is to look at the spine all the way down. And as you get to the base, which is just here, yeah, get there, you move about five centimetres either side, and you will find the posterior uh, superior iliac spine. What you're looking to see is if it's level and you're comparing it to the front. So you can normally palpate at the front there and you're looking here. And normally there will be a slight anterior tilt by about five to six degrees, which is completely normal. Anything that is um, asymm asymmetrical, one going up, one going down would be a concern and can cause a leg length discrepancy. So you need to rule out pelvic tilt. Uh, and also you can find that it can be posteriorly tilted 
unusual, more so anteriorly, but just to work out whether that's the cause of the leg length discrepancy. So you need to look at that as well. Once you've got the anterior superior neck spine, if you're unable to palpate, which unfortunately in some of the larger patients, it's not, not as easy to find, you can try to palpate the greater trochanter. And one way to locate this is to ask your patient to AB and AD duck the foot and it should pop out. So if you do that just on one side, so you keep your foot there, keep it flat, and you're just turning it like this, that's it, there we go, and it sticks out. You can feel it protruding, you'll probably see it if you do it on this side, we go that way, and if you do the same on this side, can you see, it just pops out, so it's just there. Yeah, so you're looking at that, and again, that's another bony landmark that you can measure. Again, I can see five to six cent uh, millimeter difference. Yeah, no more, so it means it's not any additional functional element that's added to it, it's just the structural that we have. If we were to see a patient and the longer side is supinating and the shorter side is pronating, please always look at spine and scoliosis and rule that out not to be a cause. So with regards to the leg length discrepancy, what you need to look at is compensations and where they may occur. In an adult, you will find that the shoulder will norm normally drop to the longer side, pelvis will lift to the longer side, and then you will find that the head will tilt also um, to the uh, longer side. So you just need to weigh all of that up and see what other compensations are occurring with regards to a leg length. In children, the leg length discrepancy and the compensations are different. You will tilt on the shoulder to the, short, uh, to the shorter side. And the way we measure is we place blocks under the shorter limb and then see how many of these blocks then result in an alignment of the pelvis. Here we go. So if I place this under hill, place it under there, and see if that levels off. It does. Yeah. So that's a block, and it's now completely level. If I remove the block and see how many of them I've used, we're looking at one, two, three, four. They're three millimetres in thickness, so that amounts to about 12 mil in total. If we were to place a heel raise in, we would only place less than half, so it would be anything between four and six mil that we would put in. But the difference in chair is less than two centimetres, so we would not treat this.